So, uh, hello and welcome to a short introduction of Conwip. I would like to introduce the production planning method Conwip to you. So that means we are going to focus on one slide to explain the theoretical concept of Conwip. And then I'm going to show you a um, model in Analogic how um, Conwip can be implemented into the beautiful software of Analogic. So as promised, this is the slide, the theoretical concept of Conwip. So what we can see here is our production. We have two machines, machine one, machine two. We have in front of each machine inventory. We have a sequential production process. So you have to first finish machine one or the duties of machine one, and then you can start with the duties of machine two. Once the items are finished, the items are stored in the finished goods inventory. Convip stands for constant work in progress. So that means we are limiting the maximum amount of items within the VIP. The VIP includes both inventories in front of the machines and the inventory within the machines. So this is our VIP in this example. And now we are limiting this VIP to an upper bound, which is called the VIP cap. So that means it is not allowed that the VIP exceeds the VIP cap. So this is the first restrictions. So the second restriction is connected to the work ahead window. So that means those orders, so these are all orders. Yeah, I assume these are customer orders. They are sorted according to the due date. So the order which is urgent has highest priority and is ranked in the list in the top. And then we also need to know how many pieces the customer orders. So on the one hand, we can have here information about the amount, the unit pieces, or we can translate that in workload. So we multiply it with a processing time, for instance. But assume now we are dealing with pieces. That means the VIP cap and the VIP is measured also in pieces. So that means we have now to rank um, our list and this is sorted based on the due dates. And now the work ahead window takes um, place now. We are just considering orders which are within the work ahead window. So if the work ahead window um, is due two weeks, then we only consider orders which have their due dates within those two weeks. And there are perhaps some orders which are not taken into consideration. You're not allowed to violate the priority based on the priority rule, dispatching rule for um, this list. So now we can test in a little example the two restrictions, the work ahead window and the VIP cap. Assume in the beginning that the system is empty. And we also um, define the VIP cap is 10. So if the system is empty, the VIP is zero. So we can take the first order and assume the first order is one piece. So we can insert the first order into our production. The VIP is now one and the VIP is smaller than the VIP cap. So we do not have a violation of the VIP cap constraint. Then we go to the next one. This is five pieces, for instance. So we insert that as well. Then we have a VIP of six and we're still not violating the VIP cap. And then we have the third order, which is perhaps also five. So we want to enter those five um, items. And now we recognize uh, we violate the VIP cap. So it is not allowed to enter for the third order our system. And it is also not allowed this is now the work ahead window and the due date um, sorting priority that we overtake the third um, order. It could be possible that the fourth order has just one item um, requested by the customer. So it would fit 
in the VIP cap, but it violates the priority of this list. So we have to wait until one of those orders will finish. That means the VIP cap, that the VIP is reduced. And then perhaps we can bring the another order with the five items in it. So if the first order finish, then the VIP is five. And then we can release the third order with the five items. And we have not violated the VIP cap. So the VIP cap is responsible um, to define the upper bound of the VIP. The work ahead window takes into consideration how many orders are responsible for planning. And those two key perform um, those two input parameters have two um, reasons to be there. So assume we have um, a high demand season, yeah? so Black Friday or something like that. So we have a lot of orders here in our working books. Then um, the VIP cap is the bottleneck because you cannot release as many orders as, as you have. So that means um, the VIP cap restricts now the production. On the other hand, if you have a low demand season, then you have less orders here. That means um, the work ahead window becomes the bottleneck because you want to have a stable production and you try to release as much um, as many orders as possible into the system. And that results that you perhaps are not violating the VIP cap, but you go um, all the way down um, of the work ahead window and you consider immediately all orders which are available in your order books um, within the work ahead window. But you are not allowed to take more orders into uh, consideration. Um, so those orders are still not available for planning. So those two um, effects can happen um, in the convex system but just by using the VIP cap and the work ahead window. So that means um, those are the two important um, input parameters, but we can also see um, that there is a capacity trigger included. Yeah? Um, the capacity trigger is an information, do we need more capacity or do we need less capacity? It is not directly connected to the work ahead window, so we can see the capacity trigger takes um, um, a longer time frame into consideration, so that example could be um, I need uh, two weeks to fire people and I need two weeks to hire people. And then I just take um, the accumulated um, demand into consideration of the two weeks, for instance, and then I can see is the accumulated demand from the customer higher than uh, the provided capacity of my system. If that is so, then I need more capacity and I can increase the capacity. And of course, the vice versa um, is also possible that I can reduce the capacity. And then we have um, also um, the dispatching rules. So one of the dispatching rules um, is um, connected and entering the production orders into the system. And we have also dispatching rules immediately in front of the system. So this is not unique to Convip because in all other queuing systems, also in the backward scheduling, also in the MRP, um, you have queues in front of machines. And of course, there are also um, dispatching rules applied or should be applied. Yeah. So basically first in, first out or early student are the uh, most common um, dispatching rules. So that means with just two basic um, input parameters, we can define a convex system. And now we're going to try to model that in any logic. And I will show you already a finished model consisting of four machines. So this is any logic. We can see here um, four stations, which are our four machines, um, similar to the conceptual model we had before. Those four machines are in sequence. So every production order has to fulfill all those four processing steps. 
The machines are generated um, by myself. So this is not a standard block, but this is another story. Yeah. So let's assume this machine has the functionality of a queue and the um, delay block. Um, in another tutorial, I explain in more detail the functionality of this machine block. And we can see immediately an hold block in front of the machines. And that is important um, to evaluate or to constrain the system based on the VIP cap. So the idea is whenever um, the VIP is exceeding the VIP cap, then this hold block closes. And it is not allowed um, that any more agents are entering the processing step. In the end, on the other hand, when production is done and they are going to the FGI, then the VIP is reduced. And then you have to check again, is the new order violating the VIP cap? If yes, the order has to still wait. If no, the new order can enter the processing station. So that means um, we have to measure the VIP in the beginning. So this is similar to the basic model. Um, we generate um, a variable whenever an order is going into the system, we increase um, the VIP and whenever an order is leaving the process, then we are reducing the VIP. We are reporting all changes of the VIP to a statistic element, which is a continuous statistic element so that we can measure the average VIP. Um, and the system is now just constrained. So the system means um, the variable VIP is now constrained by the VIP cap. And we can define or we can define a parameter, um, the parameter VIP cap, and then you can enter an integer variable here. So if we have a closer look to this hold block, then we can see here in the if statement that we ask the variable VIP is greater or equal to the parameter VIP cap. If that is true, then we immediately block the hold block. So we um, address the hold block. So hold uh, underscore VIP underscore cap. And then we use the function block because the VIP exceeds the parameter VIP cap. If we go to the other side of the life, then we go to the FGI and here in the FGI on enter. So that means the process, uh, the products are processed completely and are now transferred to the FGI. Then we ask again, dear variable bar VIP, are you smaller than the parameter VIP cap? If yes, then please unblock the hold block in the beginning. So we are using now the unblock function of the hold block. And that's an easy way how you can immediately implement the VIP cap constraint to the system. So what is missing now is the work ahead window. So now we are immediately sending our orders to a delay block. And the idea is that those orders are delayed until they are within the work ahead window. How is that done? You can see here we have somewhere else calculated the delay time. So we delay it based on the information on the agent in attribute timestamp 2. So if we go to the source, we can see that we did the calculation on exit um, of the source block. And um, we store the information of the due date. So the due date is calculated in, the, um, in that example with a constant um, um, share and an exponential um, share um, to calculate the due date. So now we want to delay um, the orders so that they're within the due date. So when an order arrives, we take the due date, we subtract the planning horizon, the um, due date, the work ahead window, and we subtract the actual point in time 
when the order is arriving in the system. And if that is already negative, that means the arriving order is already within um, the work ahead window. So we have not to delay this order. That means if that is negative, then um, the zero is taken based on the max function. So that means the delay block um, waw underscore delay delays order until um, the um, order is within uh, the work ahead window. We can also see um, that maximum capacity um, is um, activated for this delay block. Um, so that means all the arriving orders can enter those delay block. And then when they are within the work ahead window, they are waiting in the order queue. And now we have two options in this order queue. We can set the order queue very, very big. Then all the orders which are within the planning um, horizon, so which is the work ahead window, are waiting in the order queue and are waiting for the VIP cap restriction. Another option is that we decline orders. So you can see here in the um, queue block two exits. Yeah, um, We have an exit for the timeout and we have an um, exit for preemption. The timeout um, means when an order is waiting or an agent is waiting for a predefined time, which you can um, define here, the timeout. So in that one, if an order waits 100 seconds, unit is seconds, then this order has to leave the order queue and is rejected. The enable preemption works a little bit different. So whenever the maximum capacity is violated, the um, standard configuration is one. Whenever this um, capacity is violated, then the additional order which is coming in is rejected and has to take the exit. And now we have two options to influence the capacity um, in this model. Yeah? So if you click in nowhere, um, then we can see somewhere down. Um, in the startup code, which is executed um, in the beginning when the simulation is compiled. And then we are just asking the parameter um, situation two, which is a Boolean parameter. Um, so in this parameter, um, it is yes or true. So if in this parameter situation, um, this is the parameter here, if there is yes, indicated or true, then we set the order queue to a capacity of very large, 1 million, 100,000, I cannot read it. Yeah. So then the order queue size, the capacity of the order queue is very, very high. Yeah? So that means the capacity of one is overwritten by this very high amount of agents. And then most likely none of my orders are rejected. If we change that to false, this parameter situation to, then the capacity remains at one. And then it is more likely that orders are rejected because we are violating this capacity constraint here in the order queue because the preemption is activated. So that was the short introduction to Convip and how you can implement it into Analogic. Good luck with it.